Good day, class. I am Ma'am April May G. Agustin, and for today, we will be discussing another lesson, which is all about the exogenic processes. After going through this lesson, you were expected to learn the following. Number one is to describe how rocks undergo weathering. Two, to identify the agents of erosion. And number three, to explain how the products of weathering are carried away by erosion and deposited elsewhere. The earth's surface is composed of water and land masses. The solid portion is made from rocks and minerals that could experience changes either physically or chemically. The weathered materials are transported by different agents from one place to another and will settle down in a particular area. These progressions that happen are achieved by forms called exogenic processes. It includes weathering, erosion, and deposition. Exogenic processes include geological phenomena and processes that originate externally to the Earth's surface. They are genetically related to the atmosphere, hydrosphere, and biosphere, and therefore to processes of weathering, erosion, transportation, deposition, and denudation. There are four types of exogenic processes namely weathering, mass movements, erosion, and deposition. Now let us proceed in discussing the first type of exogenic process which is weathering. Weathering is the process of disintegration and decomposition of rocks. Weathering is a process of breaking down of rocks into smaller pieces such as sand, clay, gravel, and other fragments. There are three types of weathering. The first one is mechanical or physical weathering. The second one is the organic or the biological weathering. And the third one is the chemical weathering. Now let us proceed in discussing the different factors affecting physical weathering. Physical weathering. So what is physical weathering? Mechanical weathering is also known as physical weathering. Mechanical weathering is the physical breakdown of rocks into smaller and smaller pieces. One of the most common mechanical actions is frost shattering. It happens when water enters the pores and cracks of rocks, then freezes. Frost weathering, frost wedging, ice wedging, or cryofracturing is the collective name for several processes where ice is present. These processes include frost shattering, frost wedging, and freeze-thaw weathering. Mechanical or physical weathering is also caused by thermal stress, which is the contraction and expansion effect on the rocks caused by changes in temperature. Due to an even expansion and contraction, the rocks crack apart and disintegrate into smaller pieces. Now let us proceed in discussing the different factors affecting the organic or also known as the biological weathering. Organic or biological weathering refers to the same thing. It is the disintegration of rocks because of the action by living organisms. Trees and other plants can wear away rocks since as they penetrate the soil and as their roots get bigger. They exert pressure on rocks and makes the cracks wider and deeper. Eventually, the plants break the rocks apart. Some plants also grow within the fissures in the rocks which lead to widening of the fissures and then eventual disintegration.
microscopic organisms like algae, moss, lichens, and bacteria can grow on the surface of the rocks and produce chemicals that have the potential of breaking down the outer layer of the rock. They eat away the surface of the rocks. These microscopic organisms also bring about moist chemical microenvironments which encourage the chemical and physical breakdown of the rock surfaces. The amount of biological activity depends upon how much life is in that area. Burrowing animals such as moles, squirrels, and rabbits can speed up the development of fissures. Now, what is chemical weathering? Chemical weathering happens when rocks are worn away by chemical changes. The natural chemical reactions within the rocks change the composition of the rock over time. Because the chemical processes are gradual and ongoing, the mineralogy of rocks changes over time, thus making them wear away, dissolve, and disintegrate. The chemical transformation occur when water and oxygen interact with minerals within the rocks to create different chemical reactions and compounds through processes such as hydrolysis and oxidation. As a result, in the process of new material formations, pores and fissures are created in the rocks thus enhancing the disintegration forces. Rainwater can also at times become acid when it mixes with acidic depositions in the atmosphere. Acid depositions are created in the atmosphere because of fossil fuel combustion that releases oxides of nitrogen, sulfur, and carbon. The resultant water from precipitation reacts with the rock's mineral particles, producing new minerals and salts that can readily dissolve or wear away the rock grains. Chemical weathering mostly depends on the rock type and temperature. For instance, limestone is more prone to chemical erosion compared to granite. Higher temperatures increase the rate of chemical weathering. Now, what is the difference between physical and chemical weathering? Physical weathering refers to the disintegration of rocks by physically breaking them apart, while chemical weathering refers to the decomposition of rocks and minerals as chemical reactions alter them into new substances. Now let us proceed in discussing another type of exogenic process, which is erosion. Agents of erosion includes water, wind, ice, and gravity. The agents of soil erosion are the same as the agents of all types of erosion water, wind, ice, or gravity. Running water is the leading cause of soil erosion because water is abundant and has a lot of power. Wind is also a leading cause of soil erosion because wind can pick up soil and blow it far away. Activities that remove vegetation, disturb the ground, or allow the ground to dry are activities that increase erosion. Erosion by ice can erode the land. In frigid areas and on some mountain tops, glaciers move slowly downhill and across the land. As they move, they pick up everything in their path, from tiny grains of sand to huge boulders. On the other hand, erosion by gravity pulls any loose bits down the side of a hill or mountain. Gravity erosion is better known as mass movement. Now, let us proceed with our additional information about weathering and erosion. Regulate is when weathered rock remains in place and remains in its pure state. When we say sediment, 
Sediment means when weathered material is removed from the site of weathering. Moving water, it is the main agent of erosion. People, people nowadays became one of the cause of erosion. Weathering and erosion, a weathered rock material will be removed from its original site and transported away by a natural agent. Sedimentation, on the other hand, is a natural process in which a material is carried to the bottom of bodies of water and forms to solid. Now let us proceed with the last type of exogenic process which is mass wasting. When we say mass wasting, it is the movement of rock, soil, and regulate downward due to the action of gravity. Mass wasting is triggered by the following factors such as over steepened slope, water, earthquake, and vegetation removal. Let's wrap it up. Exogenic processes are driven by the energy in sunlight. Sunlight causes air to move, water to be lifted into mountains, and ocean waves to rise. These moving fluids attack the solid surface, eroding it, carrying the broken pieces away and depositing them to fill low places in the landscape. Thank you so much for attending my class today. And I hope that you have learned something. All the pictures and ideas used in the PowerPoint presentation are credits to the rightful owner.